Hello gang, Edgar Wright here at TrailersFromHell.com and today we're going to look at a film which Joe Dante describes as the worst film that's ever been on Trailers From Hell. I would beg to differ 70%. This is a childhood favourite of mine, The Black Hole. Now this film I am very fond of because I saw this when I was six at the cinema and back then when anything that was even vaguely Star Wars my six year old brain would think it was cool. But there's something about the black hole which even though I look at it now and there are things that are not good about the film, mostly the robots Vincent and uh, Bob which are voiced by Roddy McDowell and Slim Pickens which have, have very silly designs. But look at these vector graphics. They couldn't be more basic, they couldn't be more primitive and yet there's something so fucking cool about this opening and I love, love, love John Barry's score which is incredible and he has this, it's, it's very strange, this film is very odd all round because it was originally written apparently as a 2001 ripoff and then when Star Wars was huge in 77 this was rushed into production and aside from the cute robots it pretty much is a quite a dour like sci-fi film and um, you know, like, so John Barry's score, uh, particularly the main theme, is like a real, like, sort of funeral dirge, and it's kind of very moody for kind of what's supposed to be, you know, Disney's answer to Star Wars. And the fact that Disney's answer to Star Wars is both moodier and has, like, a cast straight out of a disaster movie is very strange. So you've got, you know, kind of, uh, Star Wars had, like, Mark Hamill, you know, Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford, and this has Ernest Borgnine, <laughs> Maximilian Schell, Anthony Perkins. The, what's even weirder is that they had action figures for them all. So very strange to have like an Ernest Borgnine action figure. Now, a funny thing is in, in Quentin Tarantino's script for True Romance, but not in the finished film, actually in the a deleted scene on the DVD, there's um, a, a scene in the comic shop where they have black hole figures and there's a line, oh, black hole figures. And, and um, Clarence Worley says, yeah, I always thought it was funny that some kid at home would be playing with Ernest Borgnine. Now, 1979, that kid was me. I had an Ernest Borgnine figure and I used to play with it. So I used to play with Ernest Borgnine and Anthony Perkins uh, when I was a little kid. I think it may have affected me. The other thing that is amazing about this film, not only are the matte paintings great, some of the miniatures are great, some of these effects are terrible and um, some of the bits that are kind of like the sort of the most obviously Star Warsy bits are kind of the worst. But there's a very, very, very strange 2001 inspired ending where the kind of the goodies go to heaven and the baddies go to hell. And as a six year old, I thought this scene was pretty weird. And when I went to see it at the cinema, I came out with my family. I had no idea what had just happened at the end. Basically, Maximilian Schell, who's the big baddie and owner and creator of um, a very fine robot design, Maximilian, ends up kind of trapped inside his own kind of creation in basically this Hieronymus Bosch matte painting. Um, so he basically ends up in hell and you have this long kind of like matte painting shot which pulls out showing Maximilian trapped in his own robot in hell. Now that's too much for a six year old to handle, especially in a fucking Disney film. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, but I love it. I still love it. It's the black hole. Journey that begins where everything ends.